Crutchley, who is joining me to talk about some hot topics on the subject of direct booking. Welcome, Mark. How are you? I'm very, very good, thank you. And thank you so much for having me. I, uh, I've been waiting for a long, long time to get the invite. I've been listening to your podcast for a very long time. Uh, in fact, when I was first starting to get going as Boostly, I was looking around for like resources and whatnot. And it was obviously your podcast as well as Matt's and a couple in the uh, a UK that were sort of growing in a bit of popularity. And now there's there's loads, you know, and I've got one and, you know, there's a couple of real good people in, in, in America who've got one. So it's nice to nice to be on here. So thank you for the invite. Well, you're very welcome. Yes, it's been a long time coming, <laughs> but uh, but so glad to actually uh, to actually pin you down and get you here and and talk about. I know what is one of your favourite topics, which is booking direct. But before we kick off, Mark, give us a little bit of a background to you and Boostly, how you got into this business, and what Boostly is about. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So. I am from a very, very little town village in in, in the UK. So the, t the town is Scarborough, um, but the actual village is Howard Dale, and it's in the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors countryside. So right there in the northeast, it's settled nicely halfway between Scarborough and Whitby. And a fun fact for everybody that is tuning in, Scarborough, Whitby, and the Yorkshire coast is the second most visited location after London in the UK, which if you throw into it some of the big cities, it's it's really, you know, it's, it's a really popular tourist town. It was in fact the first ever tourist town way back when, when the when, when the rail trains were, were first laid down, uh, they went up to Scarborough and so many people from London and the South came up north to see Scarborough for its very famous spa water that could apparently cure plague or some disease or something like that. But anyway, that's where it's got its famous and, and that's where I grew up. And the thing about Scarborough, and the thing about Whitby is that one in every three houses is some form of hospitality, or it's a guest house, hotel, rental accommodation. And in the 90s, um, there was a very big foot and mouth crisis in the, in the UK. And my parents um, were inherited into a fifth generation in a 200 acre farm. So it was very much arable. It was very much livestock. You know, it was all, all of that. But when foot and mouth hit, they had to make a decision. They're either going to carry on or try and pivot in some way, shape, or form, which is kind of ironic. You know, so many businesses in 2020 have had to pivot in some way, shape, or form. So they pivoted and they knocked down a barn and they built four uh, guest house rooms, bed and breakfast. It's one of the first probably in the area, one of the first in the county to do so. And, and I'm five or six at the time. And I'm growing up amongst this. So all of a sudden, people are just at the house all the time. There's always somebody in the kitchen. And I grew up. Uh, in this atmosphere and, and it proved to be really popular um you know back in back in the early 90s there was no websites or anything like that it literally was you'd come you'd have a good time you tell your friend some clever little newspaper ads here and there advertising in magazines and you know that's how you got your bookings and over the years four bedrooms turned into 14 bedrooms they added on a tea rooms so they were doing evening meals as well as having the farm so like this whole farm stay uh, phenomenon that's really popular now. They were they were one of the first ones, definitely in the area, which was you know which which was which was really great hindsight from them. And you know I'm growing up among, all the time. I'm, I'm doing like chores at the weekend, summer holidays to earn pocket money. But my passion has always been soccer, football. I'm a massive Liverpool football fan, and um, I wanted to be a player. The problem is I'm not a very good soccer player, uh, but I, I fell into coaching. So I'm like 16, 17, 18. I drop out of school, drop out of college to start teaching uh, youth football in the area. And then I get all my badges and I get my advanced badges. And then I get an amazing opportunity to work in America. So I leave in 2002. Um, I do my five months visa, come back home to England for seven months. And I just keep doing that for years and years. Get to travel to every state. It was phenomenal. I had an amazing time. Jumped over the Canadian border for a couple of nights out, which was great. You know, Vancouver and Montreal and all of it. It's a fantastic time. And then um, a buddy of mine got out of uni and he said, "Let's go traveling." So I just said, "Yeah." We backpack on. Didn't know where we we're going. One week ticket to uh, Bangkok, which then extended into two years of, of traveling. As soon as we hit Australia, our money ran out. So I fell back into hospitality, working in the bars, working in hotels, doing all of those things. And eventually, 2009, you know, came back home, realized I needed to get a job. And, you know, after living in places like Sydney and Los Angeles and touring all these amazing places, I'm in Scarborough with my friend and it's like, it's too small. We've got we to get somewhere big. And, 
you know, we just did the stereotypical thing. We jumped on the train straight down to London. And it was in London that I actually started to fall into sales and marketing roles. So I, uh, I worked for a, a many years for a company called Quipe, which was then bought out by Yelp, mm -hmm. the big review. And whilst I was there is where I learned so many marketing techniques. So social media, TripAdvisor, you know, because obviously Yelp was very big on the review. So I, I learned about the review economy. Uh, I learned about Google search. I learned about all of these things. And I was just in it day to day, even though my job was sales, I was really obsessed with, with marketing and social media. So it was like 2009, 2010, 2011. And in 2012, my, my eldest son was born. So I, I met a girl, we, you know, we got engaged and then our eldest son was born. And at this time, my parents had still been running the business. You know, I'd been helping out here and there virtually by doing things on social media and whatnot for them and TripAdvisor, but uh, very, very light. Uh, because my dad's a farmer, you know, my mum worked in a bank before doing this. They didn't have a clue about technology. And I'm the eldest of four. So in 2012, after doing it for 25 years, my parents were like, right, we need one of you to come into the business and help. We need some like new blood. And, you know, at the time we were living in London, me and my wife, and we had our eldest. And we we're like, let's go back to the farm at the amazing experience. So we did it. And we were there for, for three, four, four years, every day, just living it. So going, you know, me and my wife would take it in turns to do waiting on and whatnot. We're, we're, we're running with my family. And um, my job was to really get everything online. And I, I loved it because I was able to put the tactics that I learned in London into our 200-acre farm stay business, which was really word of mouth was all offline. So my job was to get it all online. So social media, TripAdvisor, website you know we, we got listed on the otas and you know i learned about all of that and you know in in, in 18 months we we're able to really boost our online visibility um we were top three on TripAdvisor with the most followed social media page locally um you know it, we, we were able to add on free um cottages on the farm so we got planning permission free holiday cottages we got that going uh, we added in a wedding venue. You know, it, it was absolutely firing. And uh, in 2016, I started to go to um, local hospitality meetings because I was just me by myself, you know, and it's like you don't know if you're doing it right. You don't know if you're doing it wrong. Um, and so I, I found out about a local tourism meeting and I started to go to him and it was it was full 100 people. Um, people in rental accommodation, whether it's a one rental, 10 rentals, you know, portfolio, bed and breakfast, hotel, pubs, you name it, they're all there. And um, it was at the course of going to these sort of quarterly meetings that I, you know, I got a bit more confident, knew a few people. I started asking questions, you know, how are you getting your bookings? Because we had, we had just always thrived on direct bookings because we built our brand online. And, you know, we, we obviously were getting bookings from booking.com, but it was a very low amount, 20, 30%. And I was speaking to people at these meetings and they were like 70, 80% reliant on booking.com and Expedia. Airbnb was just sort of growing, but not really that much at the time. And I was like, that's crazy. You know, I've always been taught don't build your house on someone else's land. And, you know, I, I don't know what it was. I don't know why I did it, but I just said at one of these meetings, I can show you how you can get your own bookings. I can do a little workshop thing at the, at the farm one night after an evening meal. Who would like to come and you know, five people put their hand up. They were the first five people I ever taught. And this was 2016. And, you know, I started to do a bit of research. I started to look around to see like who was in the area, who was like doing help and support. I, I went to the local council and they, the funding wasn't there and they were just like, no, nah, we're not doing it. So I just thought, well, sorry, I'll do it. So I created a, a Facebook group called the Hospitality Community. Um, it started as just Scarborough and Whitby and it just grew. So it grew all around the UK. It grew all around... Ireland and France and Germany and now it's worldwide it's got over 5,000 people in there it's it's a thriving community which is which is amazing and, and I was doing a lot of um one-on-one -on -one work so I would go into a bed and breakfast and just sort of just implement everything I would just go boom this is me this is what I do and it, it, it was great you know the, the the problem was is I I couldn't grow I couldn't make an impact on a large level and when I started doing this my sort of goals went from just helping a local area to like I want to help everybody. You know, I set a massive goal. And, and at the same time, I was getting really annoyed over here with the OTAs, the amount of commission they were charging, the lack of respect, the, the partnership that they call. There's no partnership with just a number. So I set this stupidly ambitious goal that I was going to make over 20, 25 years, 30 years, whenever I'm finished, 
Um, I want to make sure that they lower the commission rate and I want to make sure that they give us the host more data and they treat us like a partnership. And I was like, well, there's two ways I can do it. Number one, I can stand on my own little social media plinth over here and just shout about direct bookings. And I can just sort of hope that people will pay attention to me. Or I could go down the other route and where I can sort of teach as many hosts as possible all around the world these, these tactics where they don't have to over rely on the OTAs, how they can build their own bookings, how they can do this, navigate this thing called social media, why they should get a website, a PMS, channel manager, all these things that some people weren't doing. And I thought, well, right, if, if I can help a million people in 25, 30 years, then they will then tell the benefits to their guests of direct bookings and they will then spread the message. And then, you know, hopefully over time, as well as like being like listening to people like yourself show and you've got Matt Landau and you've got so many amazing people now and there's a, there's a book direct show that's out there. So if we can all combine, if we can all help and influence hosts who then influence their guests and we can get to influence then these OTAs and it's, you know, um, and, and that's where I'm at. Four years later, um, I've got an online training program. We've got a website design business. I do content creation. We've got over a thousand clients all over the world from glam sites owners, farm stays, hotels, one person portfolios, a hundred people portfolios. And yeah, it's got a podcast and I'm speaking to you. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been an amazing four years and, and here's to the next, what, 26 years. Wow. Wow. That's quite, that's quite the story, you know, and it's a story we hear so often of, of, well, cause I always ask that question, you know, how did you get into this business? And everybody has a similar sort of story that they had this background often with parents having having a guest house or or having a um so some sort of self-catering establishment and then they it grew from there and i, and I love these stories yours is great um right. love that love that story so you've obviously got a mass of experience you've got the experience from 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 your family property and working within it and then working in London and learning all about the SEO and um, TripAdvisor. And as you're talking, I'm reflecting back because I remember, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years and, and I remember, well, I remember going to um, cottages in Cornwall Actually, we used to go. We used to go up to Skegness, not not quite quite so far in north as Scarborough, but, yeah. <laughs> but we used to go to Skeg, um, take the kids many 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 years ago, and stay in you know pretty grotty uh, little self catering apartments. Yeah. And you found them in the newspapers and in the classifieds at the back of back of the local paper. And yeah. how how things have changed. But when, yeah, well. I remember a time where you just guests would just rock up to Scarborough and there's like one street in Scarborough, which is called Columbus Ravine, and people would just walk up and down. They would literally walk up and down and see if there's got a vacancy or not. And that's, you know, that's 15, 20 years ago, maybe even less 10 years ago when the people maybe used to do do that, which is, which is madness seeing that how it is now. You wouldn't dream of driving two, three, four hours on a whim and a hope that someone's got accommodation. So it's just showed how much it's changed. Yeah, and I, but I think that, that those of us who were who are that, that back there doing direct booking, and then we've gone through the oh my gosh, we can, you know, people can book online, and we can we can go on to all these platforms, and it's just so neat that it does everything for us. And then we become jaded, and now we're all wanting to move back in to taking, and, and it all comes down to control. It mm. Comes down I mean, to me, comes down to taking control. I mean, I I run a property management company here in Ontario, we have 150 properties and we are now 100% direct booking. Mm -hmm. We don't list yeah. on any OTA. And, you know, it may not, it may not always be like that because I've, I, I very much of the, of the mind that we, we have these choices. And if there's times when I've got vast tracts of, of, unoccupied space, I'm going to go out and try any other, uh, any other channels to fill that, yeah. but certainly keeping the momentum with that direct booking. And this is, this is why I wanted to talk to you because I know you are very strongly biased towards booking direct, um, as well as using other channels, but mostly the book direct uh, concept. So I wanted to talk or ask you some questions that have been coming in over the past couple of months. And I've seen them on, on Facebook groups 
and people are asking these same questions over and over again. So I thought, well, this would be great. Um, you're in the chair and these mm -hmm. are the hot topics. So are you happy for me just to fire away with some of these questions? Yeah, please do as many as you can. <laughs> okay. So question I've got, I, I'm encouraging people all the time to, you can't do direct booking unless you have your own website. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. The question is, well, should I learn WordPress and build my own website? And and actually, this this was used to be my question because I love learning new stuff and I can go off on a tangent and pick up on a, another platform and spend hours and hours and hours learning it and trying to do it myself. Or should I hire someone? Or should I use a built-in site from a booking software platform? You know, and I know we tried LiveRes years ago and they have a perfectly acceptable website that comes along i think even with with ownerez now they have a website um sites like logify my vr one rooftop they are all supplying a a standalone website what are your thoughts on this what do you think people sh not necessarily should be doing but what do you think people um could do to create yeah. their own website the best possible way yeah, hundred percent. And it's it's a you're right. That question comes up so many times in Facebook groups, and you you, you see it a lot. And it it tie you know, it's it's it, it all ties down to what do you want from your your business? Do you want to increase your direct bookings? And if so, you need to have hundred percent your own website and I, I i will probably say this time and time again and i've already said it once in this interview but you got to build you can't build your house on someone else's land which is the first and foremost the most important thing so when you think and th th there's a reason why i mean i'm, I'm sure you've had a, an in-depth conversation on property management software on, on on the show in the past but you can go and ask five different people which PMS they should be going with and you'll get five different answers you know Terry White a uh, fantastic guy he's the PMS guy he's, he's, he's the ultimate PMS guy you know he, he, he knows them all and he will go to somebody and you'll go to a show or an event or on a zoom conversation or whatever which PMS should I go to you speak to five hosts he'll give you five different answers and the the one of their main selling points they realize this as well so one of their main selling points and, and i'm not calling anybody out because they're all they all do an amazing job their own little way i've got to know so many owners or people part of these pms's property management software channels over, over the time and they're all good in their own way but one of their main selling points is that they go listen we will give you a website we know dara bookings is important we'll give you your own website what's even easier is you don't have to do any work so all of your listings are plugged into your website, which for free, you know, and when you start up a business and especially hospitality, and you've got to spend so much money up front on so many aspects of it, so like the decorations, renovations, all of these things, the last thing at the back of your mind is marketing, marketing, but it's the most important. And a big part of marketing is having your own website. But again, people just think of it as the last thing. For whatever reason, you know, you're just sort of knocking down the dominoes as you go. But if you go for a free website that's built on somebody else's land, then it's just not going to work. Yes, it may look nice, but it's a it's a heavily templated, heavily restricted pit of kit that does no bearings in Google whatsoever. So without getting too technical, Google adores WordPress because it's open source. Right. That's all you need to know. Just Google adores WordPress. The problem with WordPress, if you've never used it and you open it up, you go, right, WordPress.com, da, 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 log in, open up your thingy. What am I looking at? You know, you feel like you need a degree in coding just to be able to go to the next step. So that's where their error was. This is where. So if you're not going to use a PMS's free website, you'll hear people talk about Wix and Squarespace and, and their marketing was fantastic. I've, I've listened to uh, how I built this with Guy Ross. I adore that show. And he interviewed the founder of Squarespace and how he got started. And, you know, he tapped into something that w WordPress weren't doing is they make it drag and drop super simple. Now, the problem with Wix and Squarespace, again, it's got no bearing on, on Google SEO, not as much as WordPress. So WordPress, just if anybody tries to give you that conversation and if anybody tries in a Facebook group, and I see it so many times where people try and say, I'm with Promote My Place or I'm with Wix or, or Squarespace, I'm afraid without sounding too much 
uh, I don't know, then, of a, a know-it-all is they don't know what they're talking about. You know, just bear with, just basically WordPress is king, right? And I will even give you, because I've got a WordPress design business. We, we, we've got done for you templates where we literally give people on WordPress and say, right, go and do this. And I know Alan Egan at Vacation Suit was doing this before he stopped doing that. But with WordPress, there's two themes that you need to know as a property manager or a host. There's Elementor or Homey, H-O-M-E-Y. All right, so you go onto WordPress.com, you can download these two themes, Elementor or Homey, and you're literally good to go. Both of these platforms have been designed to be drag and drop. They make the world of WordPress easy, but anybody can can, can do it. Now, if, if, if you get to that stage and you still think, this is just too much for me. Then come to Boostly. Just give us a chat. We've got a template that you can literally have for three nine nine. That you will, it's already been done for you. All the structures being done literally for you. So um, you need to have WordPress for Google benefits, but also as well all of the cool things that come with it. So when you get down this journey, and again you want to boost your direct bookings, you want to be doing marketing. You're going to want to add a couple of little features in that you hear about. So you may go on a website and you see they've got a cool little plugin like a chatbot. Something really cool like, oh, what's this? This, this, this chatbot looks amazing. Then you'll need a plugin for that. Or if you want to run a Facebook ad, okay? And you can run a Facebook ad to anybody who lands on your website but doesn't book. So just imagine how powerful that is. Everybody knows how strong social media is. And I'm sure we're gonna get into a conversation on social media. But just imagine, especially you know now, which is like the peak booking sort of time in this you know Q4, Q1 that we're sort of talking at. Imagine if you can run a Facebook ad when they're on the scroll or they're looking on Instagram or wherever to anybody who's landed on your website in the past seven days but hasn't booked. Imagine how powerful that is. Well, that's called the Facebook pixel. You need a plugin for that. And that's what WordPress gives you. You don't get that functionality. You don't get that flexibility with a free PMS because at the end of the day, free is what you get. You know, you buy cheap, you buy twice. And, it's, and it evolves to everything. So a very long way of giving you a, a, an answer that should be just, just get WordPress is that just, just get WordPress. And then you go from there. Uh, I've given you the two themes that you even need to get started on. And, and the core thing is, is you can literally... If you do it well and if you do it right, you can you can get a website up and running in a week. That's what we we love to do with our done with you templates is that we say to everybody, listen, you can get this done within a week and live. So um, there's there's no excuses. That that is great. I'm I am such a WordPress advocate. We've just uh, we've just launched a brand new website for our company and and it's WordPress and the now they have changed their drag and drop um, back end. I can actually get in there and. Put up a blog post in minutes and, mm -hmm. and pull in the video and pull in images and make it look great. And yes, I am huge, huge WordPress advocate. Um, so, yeah, go along with everything you said. So, staying on the topic of websites, yeah. Um, what does it have to do to attract more direct bookings? It's not you can't just put up a website and expect them yeah. to come. Well, this is another uh, great question. And, and I just want to just jump on the back of something that we just said just then. So again, it's not just me that's saying this. You go and speak to anybody who is in our industry who knows anything about SEO. So Damien Sheridan, Alan Egan, Phil Tester, they will all say the same thing. I did a course with them. We, we, we joined together, the four of us. We did a course last year. And everybody got asked that same question by the 200 people that took part. And the overall answer was WordPress. But what does a website have to do to attract more direct bookings? Well, I can pretty much guarantee now that 95% of the people that are listening or tuning into this or watching this back will not be doing this. And it's a massive mistake, okay? So look at your homepage on your website. So as you're listening to this, as you're watching this, grab your phone or grab whatever and go to your homepage and start at the stop and scroll to the bottom. And I would love for you and if you do are doing this, Instagram at Boostly UK, send me a picture in my DMs or tag me in a story. Nobody is actually saying the benefits of booking direct. And this is what I'm trying to teach people. This is why I do what I do, is that if you want to cut down on your commission costs, cut down on your over-reliance and actually explain to guests the benefits of booking direct, then you've got to start doing it. You know, you can't just hope that someone's going to just magically Google you and then, uh, you know, go, you know what? 
instead of going to booking.com who do a, a ton of advertising or Airbnb, but doing a ton of brand marketing, I'm going to go find this guy's website, you know, or I'm going to go do the this. So you've got to actually start explaining the benefits over and over and over and over and over again. And if we do it at a mass scale, this is how we're going to win. So on your website, it's super simple. You'd literally put a little column going across here with some icons, the benefits of booking direct. So it could be you get better rates, you get better incentives, i.e. earlier checking time, later checkout, free Wi-Fi. If you haven't got incentives for Booking Direct, create incentives for Booking Direct. I'll give you a super quick example of what we do at the farm, and we've done this for years, and it is phenomenally successful in converting an OTA book into a direct one. Everybody that checks in, we've got a blanket checking time. It's always been 1 p.m., always been it since day one, 1 p.m. Four years ago, we made a little tweak. So anybody who booked direct, checking time was 1 p.m. Anybody who booked via a third party, checking time was 4 p.m. And we told everybody on that first email, that first email that went out to uh, the confirmation email, it was, dear Heather, thank you so much for booking your stay with us at the Granary Farm Stay. Uh, we've got some important information in this email, so please make sure you read to the bottom and let me reply back to let me know that you've read it. Checking times. If you have booked direct with us, website, phone, email, your check-in time is 1 p.m. If you have booked with us via a third party, i.e. booking.com, Airbnb, your check-in time is 4 p.m. Now, try and jump into the mindset of your guest right there. Now, why are they coming away? What are they doing? If they're coming for an event, if they're coming for work, if they're coming for like a weekend away, they don't want to have to be lagging around or hanging around to get in. A lot of people just want to dump the bags and go explore. So if, if they see that if they'd have booked direct and they've got free cancellation because our policies on the OTAs are pretty flexible, then they go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reply back and I'm going to say, hey, Mark, I want to book direct. Sure thing, Mr. Customer. We can absolutely help you arrange that. And again, um, we're not instigating the cancellation. It's not us say, calling up the, the guest or emailing the guest and saying, have a cancel that booking, book with us direct because that will get you in trouble. It's the guest that's doing it. So A, you have clear any T's and C's. B, it will not hit your algorithm in any way, shape, or form. And again, that's something that we've been doing. That's something I've been doing. I've done a whole YouTube video showing the exact breakdown of the process. And, you know, it's it's got thousands of views, and, and I know so many people that are using that one. So, again, we break down the benefits, and we do it on our website. And every single website, the template that we have for our done with you and our done for you clients and our multi-property clients, on that homepage, very clear, every single body is, is stating the incentives of booking direct. And we've got over 410 website clients now. And you will be amazed in our fact-finding part of what we do for our clients. When we say, so what benefits do you got for booking direct? A lot of them just go, got none, Mark. So we, we help them. We, we say, listen, this is what you need to do. And it works so well. Like Tracy Tolman today got a guest house. And she said the website's been live for 24 hours and she's already had a 500 pound direct booking. So it's literally just, just like that because of these, because of literally you're just boxing everything off. So this is what a website does. I mean, it's not just that. You can't have a crappy website and just have that and it will, you know, it'll turn lookers into bookers, but it's a start. So, you know, um, please, um, please make sure you do that. If you've not got it already, go and amend your website today and add it in. Okay. What type of content? We talk about content a lot and uh, I'm, again, strong advocate for a lot of content on a website, but what type of content would you say that somebody would have to have on their website to pull in more traffic? Yeah, and, oh, pardon me. That's my alarm to say I should be on this podcast. <laughs> all right, so uh, <laughs> so what sort of content should be on your website? Well, it, it, it all boils down to who are you speaking to? Now, at the farm, at the granary, we appeal to families, People who want to escape the city, come into the countryside, you know, peace, quiet, lovely. You know, we're 20, 30 minutes away from the town. We would not put on our website about nightlife, places to go for a drink, anything like that, because it's just we're not talking to our ideal client. So it's a bit of a you got to really sort of reverse engineer all of this. And it's, it's hard for a lot of people because, again, so many people who come into hospitality. This is not like maybe their first career. It's maybe something that they did after doing something else and you know they've, ne they've maybe never had to have our own business before so they've never done this step and you know you I, I say this to so many people it's one of the first things i get anybody who joins the boostly academy do it's figure out who your customer avatar is and they all look at me like 
<laughs> so it was your ideal guest. Who do you want to be? The person that you – just imagine if you were so lucky that out of your whole year, everybody who walks through your door – is your ideal guest is like the ones that are going to just be you're just going to be like wow these are amazing i want to be friends with them well that's your ideal customer that's your ideal guest so again that's the content that, that you need to do so again if you go into the youtube the boostly youtube channel there's a video on this so you can break this all down and you can sort of figure out who your ideal guest is and, and that's the content that you put on that's the content that you do not only on your website but it's the words that you will use in your emails it's the words that you use on your social media and there's a book that's fantastic for this and i've been devouring it this year the book the audio book is a donald miller story brand he's um uh, he lives in tennessee um i'm sure he used to be like a screen play writer for hollywood but he, he's got a business now a story brand he's got a business made simple mac in miss he's, he's a big author he's a fantastic guy and he's all about um doing everything that we, we talk about here you know, I'm I'm in I'm actually in the process of redesigning every Boostly website. So we've got Boostly Academy, we've got Boostly Content Creator, we've got Boostly websites, we've got we've got so many different websites. We're gonna we're gonna be totally redesigning everything and the wireframe that goes around it to match what I have, we have learned this year from this. And every Boostly website moving forward is gonna have these very um, strict wireframes moving forward that will just make sure that anybody who lands on on my website or their website, they are very, very clearly stating, this is who we are, this is why you should book, but most importantly, this is how you book. You will be amazed at how many websites I see, and I've done over a thousand marketing reviews. Um, and in these marketing reviews, a big part of it is I look at the website, and you'll be amazed at how many websites don't even say how they can book, how they can give me or the user money. And if, 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 it's, if it's not clear for them to see, then how are they ever going to do this? So, yeah, that's, again, another long way around of giving the answer of just uh, <laughs> matching to your customer avatar. That is, that is a, great, that's a great answer. Um, okay, what do we have next? Um, we've got to talk about social. Is it actually worth the effort? And if so, what platforms give the best return? One of the reasons I, you know, I'm interested in, your take on this because I've been you know, looking at the analytics for um, my own website and you know, looking at um, where, where the audience comes from. We've got 80%, over 80% are organic, uh, Google organic and, and direct, you know, people are just putting in CLRM.ca because they know who we are. Yeah. And 3% are coming to us from social, from Facebook and Instagram. Tell me about this. What do you think about that? I love this. I love it. And I, I love talking about this because, again, with social media, and I, if you spend a thousand pounds on a magazine ad, then you've got a very clear return of investment. All right, you've spent a thousand pounds, you put a little coupon in it, and it's so easy to track return of investment. When you post, online and you do this thing called social media there is no return of investment because there's, there's not a clear track now i would argue that that direct traffic that i would argue that 70 to 75 percent of that will have come from social media but they will have not clicked on a link but they will have maybe google searched you because someone's recommended now mm -hmm. what is social media uh, social media is social it's you know, social media has only been around since 2006, 2005, 2006. That's when Facebook was, you know, I, I was in a, a, at a house party in Los Angeles in 2006 and it was in a college dorm. And they, the, the girl at the party opened up a laptop and went on this thing called Facebook. And I'd never heard of it because it was only available for college kids at that time. And it's gone from there to being billions of people around the world. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got some form of social media Facebook account. And I'll focus on Facebook, but you can adapt this now for every platform, depending on who you're trying to target, Instagram, TikToks, whatever you want to go. But with Facebook, that offline word of mouth is going online and you can see it in groups massively. So people will come in and they'll ask a question or they'll ask for a recommendation and people will go in, say, your area or Scarborough or wherever, and they'll be part of a Facebook group. And there's Facebook groups for every niche. If you don't believe me, just go and type in knitting groups in Ontario and there will be a knitting group. You go and type in whatever, TV show, whatever. There are niches for everything. And there are a lot of Facebook groups that are, are catered around hospitality. 
So what you'll find is that maybe someone will come on and go, hey, I'm looking to check out Scarborough or I'm going to Scarborough for work or whatever. Where do you recommend? And then loads of people will dive in the comments and then recommend. Now, is social media worth it? Yes, 100%. The trick is, is you've got to adopt the Cheers philosophy. So remember T Cheers, the TV show in the 80s, Ted Danson? Everybody yeah. knows your name? Yeah. So this is what you've got to do. You've got to build this persona. And it's what I did for the granary. And it's what I've done for Boostly since. And what I mean by that is that you have to, in your local area or online local area, whether that be Facebook groups or just posting online, start to become that everybody recommends. So the, the, the super simple way of doing this, and this is a medium to long-term play, I'm afraid. This is no short wins. If anybody's looking for a short win, this is medium to long play, but it's so worth it, is that pick three to five Facebook groups, and they can be focused around locality, niche, or one that you set up yourself, whatever it needs to be. And all you need to do, have those free Facebook groups, three to five Facebook groups saved in your favorites on your desktop or put it on notes and just once a day for five minutes, go in and filter them to the most recent posts. And if people are asking questions, go and answer them. So if it's a local one, they could be asking for a recommended plumber or electrician or, you know, a place to go for a meal or something. And, you know, if you're local in that area, you will know and just put a recommendation up. Five minutes a day. You can literally do it in the ad breaks of your favorite TV show, you know, or whilst you're pretending to watch Netflix, uh, whilst your partner's chosen something you don't want to watch, you can easily do it then. You do it five, 10 minutes every day in three to five groups. It's literally less than 30 minutes, but you will start to become the person that people will go to. And you may see an absolute goldmine post where it goes, hey, I'm coming to the area. Does anybody recommend a place? And because you've built up that good value, because you've built up that good karma, you can then go, hey, I'm Mark. We've got the Granary Farm Stay. It's got free holiday cottages, beautiful uh, countryside views, da 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 Here's the website. And guess what? They're going to click on it. And people are going to click on it. And because Facebook is Facebook and Facebook groups are Facebook groups, when anybody interacts with the post, it bumps to the top. So it continually getting bumped and bumped. And, bumped. and that's what I did with a granary. And that's what I did with boosting when I first got it going. That like people were coming into groups and they were saying, so I've got an Airbnb. I'm only Airbnb. I'm 95% Airbnb. But, you know, I don't like paying commission to Airbnb. What do you recommend? And I was just like, well, number one, do, 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 do. You know, five, 10 minutes. And I was just sort of putting them in the comments. And I kept doing it consistently, consistently, consistently. I created a hospitality community. And I was doing it consistently every single day for what seemed like a year. and what happened in turn was that when somebody came on and goes, and now it's got to the point four years later, is that I don't need to go in these groups. But when a question gets asked, and it's, it's um, who would you recommend for direct bookings, especially this year, everybody's pivoting to direct bookings, or who do you recommend for a website? My name gets mentioned time and time again, and I'm the person that so everybody knows my name. And, and this is what everybody can do. I've just done it with the granary and Boothly, but you can do it for you. You can be that local person to go to. So you either create your own Facebook group and get everybody into your house, or you just start going into other people's house and don't start spamming. And this is what everybody does. They try and take the short term route and they'll go in and there'll be a post and they instantly go, me, 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 me. Look what I do. Look what I do. Look what I do. Buy all my things, buy all my costs. And it's like, no, just, just chill your beans. Just give before you take. Gary V, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he, he's got a book where it's left, it's jab, jab, hook. And that jab, jab is providing content, goodwill, support, advice. And the hook is when that goldmine post comes in and you can just go, this is me, this is what I do. So social media is 100% worth it. The other thing that I would say, which so many people don't do, is don't always be selling. So document, document your day. This is what Facebook stories and Instagram stories was created for, to document what you're doing. So just give a, a, a peek behind the scenes at what it is to run your business. You know, the, I, I talked about that street in Scarborough where there's 100 bed and breakfasts. And literally the, every single house on this one street is a bed and breakfast or a hotel. And what makes different from the person to the next isn't the bed, isn't the breakfast, isn't the, the wallpaper. It's the person, it's the social, it's, it's, it's that person. That person is what different is what separates every business owner everywhere. So 
the reason why people come and stay with bed and breakfast, the people why people come and stay with you and not go into the Marriott or the Hilton's is because they want a personal, they want to live like the locals, stay with the locals. It's Airbnb's like first motto. So why not put that online? And those that do, and this is what I teach so many people to do, and it's, it's amazing. The first thing I say to them is that, listen, I'm going to make you comfortable about being uncomfortable here. You know, I'm going to make you go live on Facebook. I'm going to make you tell your story and document your day. And those that do get phenomenal, phenomenal results. So it's definitely worth it. You just got to start. Yeah. Um, last week's Last week's podcast was, in fact, on building your own Facebook group and the value behind that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really, I'm really glad you mentioned that because I've, I've, I'm, I'm a member of, of a gazillion Facebook groups, you know, really eclectic ones from designing an RV interior, you know, the, the, our, our big motorhome things that Not we have. Motorhome madness. I'm part of my. You, you've madness. lived in the US. You, you've, you've seen these, these massive things, mm -hmm. and I really want to redo the interior of mine. So I'm on their Facebook group. And yeah. people are on there and they help and they give all this information and then every and then out of the blue you suddenly find out that they've got a site or they've got a training course or they've got something that really interests me. But they haven't sold it. They haven't come out right from the you know, they haven't opened the gate and said, Hey, look at this, this is me, and I'm amazing at doing this thing. They've just come in and very gently done it offered their help and made their contributions. So I loved what you said there. I think it's, I think that is so, so valuable. I've been spending a lot of time teaching some of my staff about this, that, uh, that, that when they go onto Facebook groups, don't advertise us, don't even tell people who you are or what you do. Just you'll, you'll have that time in the future. Just yeah. pave the way. And then is how many people check out your profile so your prof your, your facebook profile and so many people are scared to do this and i don't understand why it's like linkedin that profile that little section box you get on the left it's like the little bio and um you'd be amazed because it's a clickable link you'd be amazed how many people don't say what they do you know they just sort of hide at being a business owner if you go on mine it says listen my website boostly my facebook group hospitality community my podcast is is here and people click on it and they do click on it. And so many people I go on and I'll do a little check and I'm trying to find find things. And, and it doesn't say I like, owner of cottage or whatever. So you'll be amazed that if you get a good answer and if you show up enough, people will click on your profile and they don't have to be your friend to see this information. So my top tip to everybody, and everybody can do this right now. Go to your personal profile and add that you're a business owner, add the page you're a business owner of, change that little bio, that little box. You get about 210 characters, I believe it is. And just be super clear because if you are and someone comes onto your page, because they will snoop, you won't be able to tell when somebody's done it. They don't give you a little notification to say in somebody's checked your page out. It's not like a dating site, you know? So um, take advantage of it. So, so many people yeah. should do that. Absolutely. You've, you've really given, you've really contributed hugely today, given so much great, great information. And I've, I'm just going to be able to squeeze in another question before we have to wrap up here. Um, and, and that is, which one shall I choose? Um, oh yeah. The, 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 the one that everybody asks, how can I rank higher in Google? Yeah. How do I, there's this, you know, the question always is, how do I get my website to the top of Google search engine? And mm -hmm. I've, I've got the answer to that, but I'm going to pass it over and hear yours. Yeah, it's, it's the million dollar one. And it's not just hospitality or assets. Everybody's obsessed with it. And I, I don't get it. Right. If, if you go and look on Google search now. Right. And you to do SEO properly and speak to Phil Tester, Alan Egan, Damien Sheridan, they will all tell you the same, same thing, is that it's not a short-term win. They spend months, if not years, trying to get ranked. But you open up a Google search and you spend all this time, all this money, all this effort doing it. Open up a Google search now and type in vacation homes in your area and look at how many ads are being offered. Google offer up so many more ad spaces year on year on year and then if you somehow manage to rank number one well guess what's in your way that big map that massive google map that google are pushing because again they get incentivized 
by third parties because they've got the, uh, the the Google hotel ads that's in there as well, you know, and and their, and their map listings. So you could be ranking number one on Google, but it means jack nothing because you'll be rank at the very very bottom of page one. And you know, all you've got to do is go look at a Neil Patel blog, and he will give you the stats of how many people the percentage of from being ad spot number one down to there, the, the amount of percentage is lower and lower and lower. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do SEO. SEO is a fantastic tool, but make sure that you get somebody who knows what they're talking about, Phil Tester, Damien Sheridan, Alan Egan, whoever that may be, but maybe somebody local to you or go, go to the industry experts. But what I'm saying is, make sure you're ranking for long tail keywords. So don't go for the short term, don't go for these short term wins. One thing that I can guarantee everybody does right now, isn't doing right now, and it's super simple to do, but someone called bid on brand. Um, it's one of my first free videos that I, I do. So I've got a five-step video for everybody to increase their direct bookings. The first video I show, and it's probably got 20,000 views on YouTube plus, and it's called bid on brand. And so many people aren't doing this. Now, the problem with not doing this is that Booking.com, Airbnb, Expedia, TripAdvisor, and all of their subsidiaries are doing this. They're bidding on your brand name, and it's part of their contract. They say that they can do this, right? So you've got to fight fire with fire. So you've got to set up a Google Ads account. It's free to do. Set up a Google Ads account. You're going to bid just on your brand name in the location that you're in. Follow this video. Um, it's, it's super clear on how to do it. Uh, just type into Google search, bid on brand, uh, Boostly. Uh, YouTube and it's, it's there, right? Follow this video step by step because you're bidding on your brand name, which is a super unique keyword that you'll be paying pennies for this ad. But it means that your ad will be right at the very top above booking.com, above Airbnb, above everybody, right at the very top Google ad. And you can drive them to places on your website that that um, you wouldn't be able to do with, with, with standard search. So that's how you do it. Number one, bid on brand. And also as well, don't be afraid to spend a bit of money on long tail keywords in Google Ads. Again, because it's unique, it's super, super cost effective. You're spending 20, 30p a click compared to two, three, four pound or dollars a click if you're going for like hotels in or accommodation in. So that's how I would focus on ranking. If you're going to go down the SEO route and all of that, hire an expert. You know, mm -hmm. don't just go on to Fiverr or Upwork.com. Go and find the industry experts because they, they've been there, done that, and they can definitely help you. Yeah, so we've got Alan Egan, Phil Tester, uh, Damien Sheridan, and I'll add in there Conrad O'Connell from Build Up Bookings in here in the US. Um, yes. So I'm going to put all those names onto the show notes. I will put a link to those videos and, of course, to Boostly on the show notes. So anybody who's interested, to, and I'm going to go straight there now because um, I love that idea of, of bidding on brand. We've not done that. And yeah, I'm going to go take a look and I encourage you all to do so as well. So uh, Mark, this has been fantastic. I should think, I think we should make this some sort of regular event because- I would love to come back. So I'm guaranteed there's more questions. I guarantee oh. there's more questions. There are a ton more questions. And uh, you know, you've been very, very generous with, with your tips and your recommendations and your suggestions and advice. So thank you so much. That's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. So how do people find you? I've just said it, I'm putting it on the show notes, but you can add in your bit. Yeah, boostly.co.uk forward slash five steps is the one to get that five step guide. That's the best place to start, 100%. If you want to uh, send me an Instagram of your website, it's at Boostly UK. So B O O S T O Y UK on Instagram. It's my, my social media. I love Instagram. I love Instagram stories. I adore it as much as like I use Facebook for my business. Instagram is the only app that I have on my phone. Uh, I, I do love messing around and being creative and putting content on, on there. So that's the best place to reach me. But the best place to start in your diary booking journey, boostly.co.uk forward slash five steps. Really simple. Okay. Perfect. Well, we will be talking again very soon, I'm quite sure. Absolutely. Anytime. Just, just, uh, just send me a message. I'll be here. Thank you, Mark.